Hey there, Susie here. Before we get into today's episode, I want to share this special message with you. Now, my co-host Michelle and I love masterminds. Not only do we belong to masterminds, but we also host a mastermind. We started it almost eight years ago, and it is the premier mastermind for women business owners who want to grow their business with a specific focus on marketing. Now, this group is usually completely booked out, and very occasionally we open the doors and invite a handful of women in. So if you're growing your business, but you're struggling with feeling overwhelmed, or like you constantly have a split focus when it comes to your marketing, this could be exactly what you're looking for. We have an amazing time together and the women in the group are extraordinary. They're great cheerleaders, supporters, advisors and colleagues for you. And they're also seeing extraordinary results. We see people cracking the million dollar, two million dollar, three million dollar mark, launching new e-commerce sites that go from zero to ten thousand dollars a month in sales. They're doubling their conversion rates, they're growing memberships, they're selling courses, they're growing their personal brands, and they're getting all kinds of media exposure and speaking opportunities and so much more. You can learn more about the Mastermind and join the wait list over at herbusinessmastermind.com. We're going to open the doors soon, so you definitely want to be on the list to get an invitation. So head on over to herbusinessmastermind.com. Create content that attracts, converts, and keeps your ideal clients. This is Content Cells. Hi, you're listening to the Content Cells podcast, the show all about how to create content to attract, convert, and keep your ideal clients. Welcome to episode 93. I'm Susie Daphnis, and here with me is my co host, Michelle Falzon. Hey, Michelle, how are you? Hey, Susie. I am great. I'm really looking forward to today's episode. Super keen. I'm super keen because you know I like saying super (laughs) uh, to chat about something that really can make a big difference with just a few small tweaks. Me too. And yeah, this is something that many people are doing right now that is perhaps not showing them in their best light, quite literally, because today we're talking about how to make your videos look Great, super great. Um, Specifically, (laughs) we're going to talk about what you can do to make your backgrounds and your settings look great, as well as some tips on quite inexpensive equipment options that are going to make a big difference to how fabulous you look on screen. Fabulous, darling. (laughs) And yeah, the, the background is so influential in terms of how our videos look. And yet, you know, Susie, I so often watch a video and I think, did that person even contemplate mm. their surroundings? Like, mm. did they even think about it? It's something that's co- quite often overlooked. We'll sweat about what we're going to say and how we look personally, what we're wearing, and then we kind of just forget about the whole thing that's going to occupy most of the screen. You know, and I see stuff that's messy or bland or makes the person look washed out or even backgrounds that are just way too busy or noisy or just plain old daggy or unprofessional, you know, people walking into the room and then getting startled and seeing the camera and walking out or something that's not at all in line with their brand, like, you know, a health expert walking down a street lined with fast food restaurants or a wealth expert, you know, with surroundings that look a bit down and out. So it's really important and we want to tune your antenna today to how are your video backgrounds looking. Mm. I'm very excited about this because um, I have seen this done very, very badly and I've seen it done very well. And having done videos now for a number of years, having seen our own approach to this uh, evolving. And so um, if you, uh, you know, hear the words daggy, unprofessional, did they think about this? And you think, oh, I might have done that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, this conversation actually came from some of our masterminders, people who are in our Marketing Success Mastermind, saying, um, I, I really need to do something about my video backgrounds. Uh, and so if you're in that same boat, um, never fear, because in this episode, we have five pro tips for your video backgrounds that are going to make your videos look professional, but authentic in an authentic way. And they're going to keep your viewers watching longer. Um, because when that happens, you have a greater chance of getting your message across and getting people to take up your call to action or click the button or make the call or whatever it is that you're wanting them to do. So today is about five pro tips for choosing video backgrounds. So let's get started. So you've got the right outfit on, check. You've got makeup and hair in place, especially for our women listeners check 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 <laughs> <laughs> and now you're ready to start filming now before you roll the camera um 
take a quick look to see that you've got these five pro tips for optimizing your background covered. Um, And it isn't difficult and it can really make a huge difference to how good your videos look. So what's Mm -hmm. our first pro tip? Well, we're going to talk first about your authority bling. So you want to get your authority bling in place. What does that mean? Um, You know, you want things in the room that are going to add authority to who you are. These are objects. So, you know, bling is usually reserved for like the jewellery, the necklace, the bracelet, whatever. In this case, you're dressing yourself up with the um, award that might be on the wall or the certificate or the pile of books or the professional objects like the tools of your trade. So I've got a a friend who is a professional renovator and so she'll have, you know, renovation type tools lying around, literal tools, but you might also be a stock analyst and so you've got a monitor there with the, um, you know, live stock trading happening on it or some graphs or something like that. It might be historical items from your past Um, It could include photos of you with your clients. You know, perhaps it's you speaking on a stage at a big event or with someone famous who lends credibility. And um, you really want to get this bling in place. Start to think about, okay, what can I put in this setting that's going to tell the story? Because when I'm watching a person on video, I'm not always looking right at their face. My eye wanders into the background and I, I'm, I love it, Susie. I'm often looking at a person. <laughs> Checking out their home. I am. I'm curious. <laughs> and I think a lot of people are. You know, oh, that's a nice lamp or, oh, that's an interesting book or, you know, whatever it might be. So, um, yeah, you definitely want to be really mindful about this because your audience is watching. And um, we've got a quote from uh, Belinda Weaver from Copyright Matters who is um, a wonderful member of the Her Business community and um you know she says that she um basically has a um background that shows her personality and her environment she's been really deliberate and in this case it was her bookcase and that was the thing that really Mm. led credibility to her and it was a subtle thing right but you know she's read lots of books she's perhaps written some of those books um she she's a copywriter she's about writing writer (laughs) words are important to her you know so these are the subtle sort of cues that she's giving that are building her authority as a writer and in her case she said um uh I went for a background that showed my personality and my environment. In my case, it was my bookcase without being distracting. I made sure I was close enough to the camera to be the main Mm. focus of the shot. Mm. Yeah, lots of good things in that one statement actually. (laughs) Yeah, right. Mm. And and that uh, I think it's a great example too, Susie, because you don't have to be overt. You don't have to sort of have this giant trophy, the six-foot-tall trophy sitting next to Mm. you, you know, and dwarfing you. It's just little subtle things that can be cues there. And, you know, if your personality, that's what I loved also about what she said. She talked about um, that showed her personality. Mm. And Belinda's got a fantastic, unique personality and she does a really good job, I think, mm. of expressing that personality. But I think sometimes we get caught up in the idea that we have to be somebody else or look like that other competitor of ours or whatever. And so this is your opportunity to let your personality shine through. It might be a little quirky thing. Um, but, you know, you don't want to do anything that's contrary to your personality. Mm. So if your personality is staid and professional, Um, make sure that's reflected in your background. Don't, just because somebody says you've got to have a bright background, don't go for a graffiti-style wall, Mm. you know, with your, that you put your graduation diploma from law school on. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, And, you know, conversely, if you're like Belinda, you have a big, bold personality, let that shine through. Find ways to uniquely share your authority bling. And Susie, you're a fantastic learner and well-known for interviewing tons of great authors and um you know, sharing lots of great books and learning with your community. So you also have that subtle nod to your authority in um, your background by showing all those wonderfully, colourfully earmarked books in your book. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I am such a book geek and I love books and they've been such a big part of my development as an entrepreneur and as a, um, as a like you said, I'm an avid learner and books are a big part of that. And quite often, you know, they've been some of my biggest mentors, you know, the, those authors. And so, yeah, so often when I'm filming and I'm in my office, what you can see behind me are those earmarked books, um, you know, all the little tabs of all the notes I've taken. Um, And these are 
it's very congruent with who I am in my community and the way in which I also disseminate um, recommendations, which I do for books. Um, but, yeah, so you want it to be congruent. So, you know, for me to have a graffiti background doesn't work. For um, Darren, who owns the gym I go to, to have a graffiti background in the gym, it works. It's kind of grungy. It's that kind of feel. It's a CrossFit gym. It works really well. Wouldn't work for me. Um, another example, uh, a friend of mine, Nadine, has started a business uh, um and it's called Essential Solutions for Every Day. And so she's a distributor of beautiful essential oils and she's starting to do these videos on a weekly basis on how to use essential oils to, you know, for skincare, to get rid of toxic chemicals that you might use for cleaning, uh, to ingest, you know, for digestive issues or better sleep or whatever it is. And so initially she was doing her little videos uh, in her kitchen, I think it was. Um, and now she's created a little nook in her house where it has a little, um, it has a plant behind her, you know, so she might have some herbs occasionally or some mm. things that are the source of the oils that she's talking about. Now her authority is different than her having a um, domestic sort of background, you know, but if she was doing the episode on cleaning products, she might well do it in the kitchen. So it's just being um, strategic and thoughtful about what message you're trying to convey because it's not just your words. It's not just the fact that you might look great. It's what's going on in the background. What story is that telling? Mm. Mm. All righty. Our next pro tip is to use a real working environment. And um, this pro tip comes from the wonderful Valerie Koo. I'll get to her quote in just a moment. So she says, find a real working environment. Um, this is about having a, a busy shop or an office um, like they do in TV studios sometimes where they show the bustle of the street in the background. So if you are a chef, having a working kitchen or a restaurant is great. If you're in the, you know, the gym floor, like I exampled, really great if it's um, health and well-being. Um, now, there's spaces, those, they're popping up all over the place. Those spaces like WeWork or the shared office spaces, this is a tip. If you're going to be doing some videos and you have a subscription or you could actually buy one for the intention of this, um, you could get access because you're a subscriber after hours and use that environment to create a real work environment. And often because of the way that those offices are laid out, you can usually get a number of different sets and looks within the one environment. Alternatively, um, we recently used a friend's office space. Now, we have beautiful offices, but we've shot in them before, and we didn't want it to look the same. So we used a friend's office on a Sunday when no one was there, um, and it gave us a real work environment. These videos I was producing were for business owners. So for me to be in an environment where you could see in the background there were computers and there were you know office chairs and things worked really well. Um, anything you want to say, Michelle? I loved how when you did that, um, and I, I, I think I was talking to you about this on the phone the other day, um, so Susie, she went to somebody else's space, but when you watch the video, they dressed that space. They didn't yes. just put up with whatever was there. They moved things around. There was a bookshelf behind her. Mm. Guess what was on the bookshelf? <laughs> All my favourite books. books. <laughs> uh, you yeah. know, and so she really kind of occupied the space and was very mindful um, that authority bling came with her into this new space. Mm. Thank you. And so this pro tip number two, which is use a real work environment, I have a quote here from Valerie Koo of the Australian Writers' Centre, and she says, any kind of active background, for example, an exhibition hall where you can get that shallow depth of field so that the background appears blurry is a good idea. Now, depth of field is a, a, sort of photograph, a photographic kind of term. Um, I don't know how to to explain it other than you will have seen these shots and actually if you use portrait mode on an Apple newer Apple iPhone you get this is that the object at the front is really sharp but what's in the background looks a little blurry and mm. so you can get that when you've got some depth in the environment in which you're filming Mm. Yeah, and that's really what it what it means is this idea that um, there's there's depth in the field of vision that people are looking at that it looks like you know when we look when you look out a window, 
and there's a tree, just like I'm looking right now, there's a tree in front of me that's quite close and then there's all the trees behind. Well, my eye, because there's great depth in that environment, my eye's bringing the things in, in the foreground in focus mm. and it's taking the things in the background out of focus. And so there's real, it feels rich, it feels like a deep environment. When you film very close up and you're very close to your background, um, there's no depth and it all looks quite flat and that's not how our eye sees the world. And so it's just a more beautiful uh, looking video when you can get that depth of field. Mm. Another tip, um, our pro tip number three uh, is something that was inspired by a mutual friend of ours, James Bergen. And uh, this is to consider using a big TV on a blank wall as kind of a core prop for your background. And you'll often see this on TV shows where um, you've got the host and then they're standing next to a TV on the wall mm. um, beside them or just behind them that's got some kind of simple graphic or a logo on it. Um, this can be good for branding and provide a really clean background free of clutter. Like it could just be you and the TV screen. And um, when James Bergen of um, Brand Within was consulting, that's his organization, Brand Within, was consulting with the huge retailer, Mr. Vitamins, they use this method in their videos. And James said, at Mr. Vitamins, we had a big TV with a simple light on it behind the person that was presenting. And also uh, simple A4 frames with the episode title or the hashtag on a shelf behind you can work as well. So even if you think, oh my God, I'm not going to be able to mount a TV to the wall and get all that <laughs> happening, think about, okay, what could I do in place of a TV that was just some sort of placeholder there that had um, the episode title if you were doing something episodic mm. or a hashtag or your URL or your logo uh, on it. Um the other great thing that I love about this approach, whether it's the TV itself or the, you know, placeholder, is that the visual can be changed really easily from video mm. to video. Because one of the big challenges, and Susie, you mentioned it before, which is why you went to that other venue. Um, one of the big challenges I find once you've done video for a while and you've got your set looking beautiful is that... Um, you know, they've done all the right things. They've set it up. It looks great. They've observed all the pro tips here. Um, but they just use that exact same setup every single time. Mm. You know, the problem with that is that now all your videos look the same. They look like the same video on YouTube or in your customer's Facebook feed. They're scrolling and that looks like just the, like the one you posted yesterday. There's nothing new about it. They may not stop and take a look. So you really want to find ways to change it up. So the TV screen makes, yeah, that, makes easy. that easy. Yeah. You could put different color <laughs> backgrounds on there. You can have different images. that you, you might have a theme for that video. So you have some visuals that consult the theme. Um, but um, you can also do those things that are non that are doing what the TV's job is doing um, without the TV. So you could move things around on your desk or put up different posters or those A4 frames that James was suggesting. Um, one thing, you know, consider having a whiteboard that you write different inspirational quotes on or different um, hashtag or episode names just straight onto the whiteboard and have that in some sort of position that's visible. Really concentrate on wearing different clothes every time. Um, change out the flowers. You know, Susie, you do a lot of your videos in um, one of a couple of places, but that's something you do. You, you do a couple of those things to mm. show variety. I do. And, um, you know, I'm conscious that, oh, here's Susie in front of the computer doing another video. And I always have my books, as I said, but, you know, inevitably the office flowers that arrive on a Monday end up in my office <laughs> and get changed out strategy. each week so that I can um, have different flowers in the background. But also I have these large posters that are, you know, inspiring quotes that I'll change out. But I, it is something I'm very conscious of. And sometimes it'll be just changing out my shirt um, to make sure that against the backdrop I look slightly different or so against those flowers I look slightly different if I'm going to have the opportunity to do that. But, it, you know, even if you've got a beautiful set and, you know, you've got a – I mean, I have this one um, – beautiful brick wall in my house but I've done so many videos in front of it now that I don't want to it to look like oh I think I've seen that but mm. there's there's ways like this suggestion from James's where you can just change something that lets the viewer know oh no that isn't the exact same thing but something I'm conscious of because I you know know that it can be you know people get a scotoma that is a, they no longer see uh, that it's different 
Mm. Um, so a couple of things that you can do that help this um, come into point number four, and that is to create space and light contrasts. Um, now, this pro tip comes from our very own Scott Emick, who does the video editing for our Her Business videos. Um, and this is about great backgrounds. You can achieve this by creating separation from your subject. And here's what he says. He says, the simplest way to separate your subject from a background is to create contrast. And the simplest way to create contrast is to examine the light in your location. Find an area to shoot where your subject is lit and the background is in the shadows. The resulting separation will draw the viewer's eye right to the subject. That's a great tip. Yeah, that is a good one. And uh, I would just add to that uh, something that I see is a really big mistake um, that people make all the time mm. and it's so easy to avoid. And this mistake is mm. um, standing way too close to their background. Yep. So uh, it really makes their videos look cramped and, and quite shadowy, like but not in a good way like, like Scott's talking about, like you just cast one long shadow. Um, and so – you know, I don't know why, but but we think, okay, I, I want to stand with this wall behind me, so I'm going to go and stand three centimeters away yes. from the wall and mm. shoot the video. Mm. And um, you know, there's a, f- a whole lot of um, not just visually, it's very flat. There's no depth of field like we were talking about before, but there's a lot of sort of subconscious negative connotations. You've literally backed yourself up against a wall, you know, or backed yourself into a corner. Um, there is no sense of space. And that can feel, there's just an f- underlying feeling in those videos. So just a really simple way to solve that is just to stand five or six feet or one and a half to two metres away from the wall for best results. Mm-hmm. And it's just incredible the difference it makes. One of the... Um situations I see this happen a lot in, Michelle, is where someone stands next to their company logo. So their (laughs) company logo is up on a wall and they're standing next to that so that their logo is in shot. It does not look good. It does not do you any favours. Move away from the wall. (laughs) (laughs) And, you know, sometimes they're shot down low so they because the uh, logo's a bit high on the wall so now you've got this weird angle and you're better off with that one go. (laughs) But if you do have the logo in in a set position that does work just move away so that it's kind of in the background you have that depth of field you you know you have a little space between uh, you and it Um, our fifth pro tip for choosing video backgrounds is about getting rid totally rid of unnecessary clutter Uh, and this is where a blank wall whether it's painted or it's all brick like I mentioned or it's textured in some way is really a great canvas for any video Um, But you want to keep the whole space behind you clear. So no signs, no pictures, no incidental objects Um, or coming closer so that you are only surrounded by clear space. But again, you've got that distance behind you, but you just have clarity, just clear and good lighting, which we'll talk a little more about. One of the things that seems to be, I see some people do this and it drives me mad, is they think it's a clear background and what they're standing in front of is vertical or horizontal blinds. And so they're being cut up every which way, every which way, the vertical, you know what I mean? Because the the visual behind Mm. them is these horizontal or vertical lines. That is not a clear black background. That looks cluttered and busy. So you want to kind of find a space that does not have that. Um, Yeah, no blinds, vertical, horizontal. They cut you off, they're horrible. So (laughs) so the idea here is that um, you find a blank wall. Now, you might think, well, I don't have a blank wall. Do you have a wall that might have a piece of art on it? Take the piece of art off, shoot, and then put it back up. One thing to remember, and I've seen this happen, is if there's a hook on the wall because you've taken a piece of heart, you want to hide the hook. (laughs) You don't want that in your shot or having a door or a slight window frame cutting up the background. You just want to, you know, set your camera and then look at what it looks like. Are there any random things? Is there a bit of a doorway? Is there a plug in the wall, you know, that your computer plugs into that's visible, that's kind of yuck? How do you make it nice and clean and clear? Mm. 
All right. Yeah, it's a great one. Um, something that I, just with that cluttered background, you mm. know, sometimes, you know, there's like the pot plant that looks like it's growing out of the top of someone's yeah. head, you know, or, you know, the, the light fitting that's sitting, you know, or I, I knew someone who used to record all their videos in a room with the, the ceiling fan on oh. and you just wanted to like, oh my God, turn the fan off. Um, so yeah, all that sort of cluttery, distracting stuff. And, and, you know, this is balancing out with the whole, um, you know, your authority bling, mm. um, there are some well curated pieces you may put in there mm. and Susie your office has got lots of things in it but you always like I've been into your office when you're really busy and there might be a few bits and pieces lying around but before a video you go and declutter and make it all really nice. I have a checklist. <laughs> yeah 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 so maybe you're listening and thinking wow she's got a checklist like yeah that's a good idea just what what are the three or four things I need to make sure and mm. double check if I put my quote up if I mm. you know mm. um what, Susie, just talking about like um, the the taking the picture off the wall, mm-hmm. I, I had to film these videos and it was like quite a few videos and I decided I would do it in my lounge room but it meant like moving the lounge and moving the dining table and like putting the camera in the, in the kitchen. Like basically I – demobilized my house nobody could use my house for the whole time (laughs) that I was filming so um you know it was it was the videos looked great we had really good depth of field but it wasn't sort of practical to do on an ongoing basis yes so I love the hook idea there's just find a place where there's a picture pop it off start filming Very good. And, you know, we want you to keep it simple. And, you know, what we're giving you today, really practical tips without you having to invest a whole lot of money in backgrounds. So main things to consider is the framing. So that is, you know, what is it that is in shot when you are um, uh, filming? Is there anything in the background that looks kind of weird? Is it balanced or is it heavily weighted to one side? Uh, Is there anything that's going to distract people that's going to be um, you know, I've seen where people have had a pet in the background, you know, gorgeous pet, but the pet's moving around or the pet's scratching itself and it's like that's all you see. <laughs> you mm. <know? laughs> so mm. just just little things but have a think about that. Unless it's core to your message, you want to eliminate those things and keep it really simple. Mm. Yeah, I've seen people like where there's a window and outside the window there's cars yes. going past. <laughs> Someone's yeah, getting in the car, with... getting out of the car, <laughs> pulling up, having a chat. Yeah. <laughs> so they're not hearing your call to action at all. No. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Look, on that keeping it simple point, one other thing I would add there is um, think about a colour scheme. So this is not expensive and not hard but can be really highly effective. So, um, you know, if you're, for example, um You kind of want to be known for your logo colors, like you might be red, white, and black, or you might be, you know, green and purple or whatever. Maybe think about a few set pieces that are just a gentle nod to that color scheme. And so that when it appears in your email or in your landing page where you've also got that color scheme, it all kind of looks like it was all meant to be together. You don't have to go and paint walls or whatever. It might just be a vase or a particular flower or um, a piece of jewellery that you wear or um, the poster board that you were talking about, Susie, could have the texture in that colour. You know what I mean? Just Mm. think a little bit about your colours. The other tip, and this is not so simple, and so I'm taking a slight detour from simple now. Um, and this is really good if you start to do a few videos and perhaps you kind of have a, a limited space or you're doing so many videos that you really want to change things up a bit, is to look at uh, a custom backdrop. And there's a couple of, there's like a low key easy way to do it. And that is to reuse an old trade show stand or a pop up banner in your office. And you can hide the clutter and also use your branding. So, um, you know, if you've ever had a pop up banner made for, for an event or a trade show, or perhaps you've had one of those big, I forget what they're called just temporarily, but those big wide banners you get, you know, photos taken in front of. What are they called, Susie? I forget. Like the pop up banners. Oh, you mean yeah. like the PR banners? Um, yeah, I don't know really, what they're really called. Yeah, yeah, they have some sort of name. But anyway, they are um, a great thing to keep. Sometimes, you know, you think, what am I going to do with all these banners? Those wide ones are really great to keep and um, mm. use as your backdrop for your for your video. Just pop it up behind you. All the washing's gone or all the, you know, the, the computer mm. equipment behind you is gone and you've got this great backdrop. Um, so reuse those. Um, or you can actually get backdrops printed or even just purchase some photography mm. uh, 
backdrops and these can be excellent they do require some sort of some sort of equipment staging equipment or something that you can hang the backdrop off um, and I've got clients who do this very effectively um, you can even get photographs taken of your like you could make your lounge room look really beautiful and take a photograph of it and then get a backdrop made of it and then mm-hmm. just hang that wherever you are now that's a tricky thing to do with scale and you know all those sorts of things but when that's done well it really looks like you're standing in front of the real place and you'd be amazed actually how many well-known people out there that are making the videos you're watching right now that are actually standing in front of a cloth or a canvas background. It can really look so real. How funny. Mm. (laughs) Um, I know for me um, a person who has like the dream set that I think, oh, I just want that set, is a a marketer named Marie Forleo and Mm. she has Marie TV on YouTube and she's also the, uh, she heads up um, B-School, which is an online marketing program. And it, she firstly she looks absolutely gorgeous every time, but she has this amazing set that is just her her set, and you know. But it's a big it's a big investment, and most of us will never need that. Um, but there's you know, but we can get started. We can just get started. Yeah, and we can learn. Like we may not have that exact set, but like what are some of the dynamics mm. there? It feels spacious. Yes. There are things in the room that show her personality Mm. um she she really has thought about it and so while we might not have the the um big space the big set we can think how do i just get a bit of that spaciousness or how do i just put Mm. that beautiful plant i just bought in here so yeah there's always inspiration i love that set too she also dream set dream hair dream hair yes (laughs) (laughs) she also you know like going back to your point little things like i think she sits she sits on a stool so in a chair Mm. with no back so you can see the full her full body she's got a hot body um and there's lots of depth of field and um, she's off to one side because she uses graphics on her um, in her videos, um, mm. which we wanted to say a little bit about, actually. Yeah, because this can be a really, really simple thing to do mm. that does make your video look different and that does really add a lot of impact to your video. It helps people to comprehend what you're saying. And that is to create space to your left or right when mm. you're filming in your background um, where you can overlay graphics later in post-production. So my, my kind of pro tip here is to put yourself in one third of the frame. So imagine the frame in thirds. And so you might put yourself in the left third or the far right third, and then you use the other two thirds as blank space while you're filming. And that space is where you would add um, pictures if you wanted to, like if you needed to put an image up or text. And you do all of that in post-production. Now, I've done that myself just using like iMovie or a Mm. simple app, or if you've got the budget or you've got a team or you're doing, you know, you have your own studio, then your post-production team uh, can do that for you. But it it doesn't have to be a big budget thing is, I guess, what I'm saying. Um, And this can take a very basic background, like your brick background that you're talking about, Susie, Mm. um, or a plain wall and make it instantly more dynamic and powerful and also show that this isn't the same video as I watched last week, you know. Mm. Um, One thing, though, a little tip for new players is that background, if you're going to do this, that whatever the background is needs to be like fairly sort of monocolored or very not a lot of variation in the colors in the background because you got to find a font color that's going to Mm. work over the top so if you have a background that's got like a a portion of it that's black and another bit that's white or it's mottled in very high contrast colors you're going to find it hard to find a font color that's going to work for your graphics Mm. on that same note um it actually i didn't know this until i tried it when you are in one third and there's two it actually looks more natural than you are and then when yes. you are smack in the middle of the frame. So just try that. It looks more natural than if you are just like looking down the barrel of the camera and the camera like you're centered. Mm. I don't know what it is. It softens it up. It looks more natural. Mm. Yeah, even if you're not planning to use graphics, yes. it's a really good tip. And if you think about, you know, I was talking about dividing it into thirds sort of across the screen, but also think about dividing it into thirds from the bottom up to the top of the screen and try and have your eye line on that um, sort of second third up, if that makes sense. So bottom third, 
middle, the top of that middle third is where you want your eye line to be. And that will also just, it it just provides symmetry. And um, this rule of thirds is a kind of well-known photography Mm. uh, tip, but it's a great thing just in terms of how you position yourself in your background. Mm. We wanted to give you, you know, the list of possible um, tools and equipment that you could have is, you know, how long is a piece of string? But we wanted to give you a couple of little things that we're using and that our members are using um, that we think you'll love. The first is because lighting is such an important part of your background, of lighting your background and lighting you uh, in contrast to your background. And the first is a ring light. Um, and so it is literally a, ru- a light in the shape of a circle that you can uh, turn up or down to give you different levels of lighting. One brand is Diva Light, but there are other brands and in our show notes we'll put links to a couple of the options for you about $120 you might be able to get it a little cheaper on eBay but um, when I'm recording in my office I've got overhead um, fluoro lighting it is in a natural color so it's not overly fluoro nonetheless it there are shadows cast on my face so what I do is that I put the light the diva light on in front of me um, and so it bounces light to my face. Now, those also have a the ability to mount your iPhone. So if you're using your iPhone to film, you put the iPhone in the middle, there's a ring of light surrounding it, you can turn it up or down, uh, and it just gives you a little bit of bounce and uh, yeah, lights you up. The other, and this is something that I've been taking on the road because I'm often doing videos or I'm doing Zoom calls, is these portable LED lights. Now, they don't just have to be when you're on the road, but they're probably about 15 centimetres across and 10 centimetres down. They're LED lights. They'll last forever. Um, And they're reasonably inexpensive. And I prop one on either side of my computer computer monitor when I'm filming using my computer and I'm on the road because I don't take the Diva light because it's a bit bigger and more um, difficult to carry. And that works really great as well. And I've recommended that to a few people who are now using it. And it actually gives you a really nice... Um, lighting. And the other thing is daylight. If you're going to film and there's a window and the sun is shining, even if it's overcast, make sure you're facing the window. I've seen people film, Michelle, and they've got the window behind them. So they're dark and the light behind them is light. So you always want to be facing the window. Uh, And in fact, natural light, I think is the most beautiful uh, Mm. if you can get it. I agree. They're really great tips. I I want a diva light. (laughs) Well, there you go. We'll give you a link. I'm going to go get one. Someone said to me the other day, you should have an affiliate link because uh, so many of our members, there's um, a group of members who are taking part in our Ideal Business Accelerator, which is a year-long course, and we're talking a lot about building your profile. And so a few couple of lessons back, I recommended the light. And so they're all posting because they're getting their lights now. And someone said, do you have an affiliate link? You really should be making a commission. Um, So, yeah, I'll give you a link. (laughs) Uh, a couple of other uh, quick um, apps and equipment. Now, this is one uh, that uh, someone recommended to me. It's called eyeglasses, just like in iPhone, just a little eye and glasses. And it's a little app that recognizes which uh, app you are using. So whether it's in Zoom or whether it's in QuickTime or um, iMovie, I expect, whatever it is that you're recording in. And now this, I, I don't know if it exists for mobile, but it does exist for desktop. And it allows you to zoom in or zoom out and it has a number of filters, some of them and some dinky things that you'd never use unless you're a teenager. Um, You know, we may have teenagers listening, but, you know, weird things that you can do with your face. But the great thing it does is it allows you to zoom in. So if you're filming in your house and you've got the laundry not yet folded sitting on the couch behind you um, or whatever is in the background that you want to hide, you can actually zoom in and create a tighter frame. You can also light up so you can actually create contrast because it works a little bit like a photo app that you can create contrast and light up your face a little if you don't have a a good source of light and um, really easy to use uh, and really inexpensive. And I was telling Michelle about it just before we started and Michelle's already downloaded it. Oh yeah, baby, I'm into that. I've already <laughs> while she was telling me, I'm like putting in the my my PayPal details. <laughs> but it was so funny because I said, Susie, I don't know what eyeglasses are. <laughs> it's an app. It's a weird name, <laughs> but it's I as in the letter lowercase I glasses. Uh, another thing that can work, and this can give you again some distance 
from your backdrop is to have a, a selfie stick. And mm. I made the mistake of buying a really cheap one. It just broke the first time I put it in my bag. Um, so get a good selfie stick and it allows you to create anything can be your background. You're walking down the street, you're in the park with the kids, you're walking the dog, you're at the beach on vacation. Now suddenly you have um, the world as your backdrop uh, and a selfie stick will give you still, you know, a stable uh, reasonably stable way to position the camera so that your background um, is awesome. Mm. Yeah, and look, even in a small space, when you have a, like, you know, that problem we mentioned about like standing right up against the wall, even if your office is quite small Mm. or you're, you know, doing something in a fairly confined area, um, the selfie stick means you don't, you, you can be, you can have the selfie stick extended and the iPhone or, you know, your whatever your smartphone is right up against the other side of the wall and give yourself as much space away from the other the other wall. You know, it gives you a lot of opportunity rather than having to have a tripod and have things mounted and that sort of takes up space in the room. So it's good in a low space environment. Mm, mm. So speaking of tripods. Mm. Yeah, well, that if you've got the space, um, it's great to use a tripod. Um, and, you know, we're talking today about uh, apps and equipment that help you with your whole like, making your backgrounds look great and making you look great within the background. Mm. Um, the good thing about that is that it it you can lock it off, and so you know you're not propping it up against you know some books on your desk or whatever. <laughs> and so, yeah. it's, you know, I've done that. Fine. I'm only laughing because I've done that. <laughs> yeah, totally right. And look. Whatever you can make happen, make it happen. Don't not make a video because you don't have a tripod. That's not what we're saying. But if you're at that point where you think, yeah, you know, maybe I do want this, um, a tripod can be great because you can control the frame. You can be really like you can sort of if you're recording the video Mm. by yourself, you can put your iPhone or your other camera on the tripod and then you can actually um, make sure, yeah, I've got that how I want it. I've I've moved I've moved the um, vertical blinds out of the frame. Um, and I've got that image just where I want it. Now I'm going to put stand on my little X on the floor and that all looks the way I want it to look. And it's not going to slide sideways or shift as you move the desk around or the things on your desk. It can be fairly consistent. Um, there is actually a really cool tripod that um, – uh, I've bought that has like um, it's like it's all bendy. Oh and yes, you know, I think I've seen that on Instagram. Is it? Oh, cool? they're so good. It's not. Cool. It's a gorilla. Is it a gorilla, gorilla pod? Is yeah. it? Ah. They are so good, and like you can like if you ha- um, it, they grip onto anything. So if you're standing near a fence, or um, you are near um, a, a street sign, or anything, you can just That's wrap great. your tripod around it great. and lock it off. They're super great, super great, Susie. <laughs> uh, and so uh, I'll make sure we've got a link to that in there as well. Uh, no affiliate link, just that it's just a great product. And the other thing, um, if you're thinking about your backgrounds and your where you're standing in your backgrounds, it can help you. Again, not necessary, but if you if you want to look at this that could be really helpful is some sort of microphone like ideally a little lapel mm. microphone that clips onto your lapel and then goes over to your to like via radio to the camera that you're using that means you can stand back from the camera um, or, or really move in that space how you want to move um, without getting that variation in sound. And so that can be really good for those depth of field things and also not having your eyeballs right up against the camera and all the other good things that we've talked about today. <laughs> um, I've got a lapel mic. I just keep it in my computer bag now that plugs into the bottom of my iPhone um, and gives me that distance. And mm. it actually also comes with a little remote. So it means I can... Um, Pop the phone or wherever I'm going to put it. And really, I have a little tripod that's probably about 10 centimetres. It's tiny, but it does the trick. Um, Mm. And then I uh, plug the mic in. I can stand back and use the remote to start it. And it just means that once I've determined what my background is, I know it's going to be consistent. And like you said, my eyeballs won't be right in the camera. (laughs) Let <laughs> me right in the camera. All right, very good. Love so it. They're good tips. Susie. They're good. They're great tips. So uh, we're going to give you links to um, anything we've mentioned here uh, in today's show notes. Thank you so much for our pro tip uh, experts. Um, mm. So, quick recap. Number one, get your authority bling in place. Number two was use a real working environment. Number three was that big TV on a blank wall. 
Number four was creating space and light contrast. And number five was getting rid of unnecessary clutter. Plus, we gave you some bonus tips on things to avoid, uh, as well as some uh, equipment and apps that will help make your backgrounds super awesome. I think super has been used way too many times in this episode. <laughs> I, I, I do want to give a super shout out uh, to one of our listeners who's given us a five-star review over on our iTunes, and that is Ali Villani. And she says, love, love, love your podcast. I was introduced to your podcast by my friend Catherine, who I met at the Osmompreneur Conference and Awards. I have shared your podcast with all my business clients, thank you, through oh. my business uh, Entrepreneurial Babes. That must be her business. Uh, and they love it. I have applied all the learnings to building my self-published children's book. And then <laughs> she's given us her name. And my first um, doll, which I'm about to produce. Okay. So she has an interesting business. Ali, we'll have to look you up. Uh, love you guys. You're, uh, you are brilliant. I highly recommend you. So that's Ali Villani. Thank you so much. And thank you for ser- sharing it with your clients. How awesome is that? Yeah. I've read Entrepreneurial Babes. Entrepreneurial Babes. Love it. All right. Check it out. Thank you for listening, uh, Ali. Um, Be like Ali. We would love your rating or review over on iTunes. We have over 61. I have to check that number because I've been saying 61 for a while. Uh, I think there's a few more. Yeah, over 61 five-star reviews, which we really appreciate. So if you enjoyed today's episode, if there are people that you know um, could benefit from these tips and strategies to help them with their business marketing, um, then we would love your rating or review over on Apple Podcasts. Michelle, what do we have coming up in the next episode? masterminds (laughs) masterminds <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Uh, so we're talking about um, you know whether you um, uh, know about a mastermind and how it could actually help you in your business this is actually being in a mastermind and Susie and I are going to share some of our personal experiences we're both in masterminds um, and, and have been in masterminds for many years here in Australia or overseas we both travel a number of times a year at the moment to go to various groups overseas um, it's really been Kind of one of the most influential things I can really say that that has has helped me to expand my sense of what's possible in my business, but also in my life. Mm. And uh, we want to share with you our love of masterminds. Um, let you know what they are if you're not familiar with this concept and how actually being a part of a mastermind can really help you grow your business. Mm, absolutely. And you might have even thought of creating your own mastermind, and they're an amazing. Um, a vehicle for your content and mm. really sharing your expertise. And I know for both Michelle and I, um, the teaching we do, the resources we share, the content that we create for our masterminders is like our best, best stuff. Mm. Um, so that's all coming up in two weeks from now in the next episode of the Content Sales Podcast. So listen up for that. Uh, in the meantime, I wanted to make sure that you got the special download that we've prepared for you to go with this episode. It's your pro tips for choosing video backgrounds. And you'll find it over on our website at herbusiness.com forward slash pro video tips or one word herbusiness.com forward slash pro video tips. Michelle, anything before we go? I want to see some videos, Susie. (laughs) It would absolutely Mm. make my day if you've taken one of these tips or some of these tips and you've made your video, let us know. We'd love to see it. Post the links over onto our Facebook page. Just search for Content Sales Podcast Mm. and share with us your brilliance because – we will give you a shout out on the podcast. We can give you any feedback based on what we see. And plus, it'll just make our day. We'd love to see you. I love that idea. Yeah, Content Sales Podcast. Just search for that inside of Facebook. Come on over to our page. Um, you'll not only um, uh, see the opportunity to tell us about your video, but you'll get updates um, whenever new episodes um are uploaded. So that's coming up in the next episode. Also, if you haven't already subscribed to the podcast, perhaps you're a new listener, you want to click that subscribe button because that means every two weeks when a new episode comes about, it drops right into your feed ready to be listened to. We want to thank you so much for listening. We will see you next time on the Content Sales Podcast. We love putting the show together for you. Thank you so much for joining us.